In this video I'm fixing this piece of skirting back to the wall here using this Bartolin 1876 the professional range grab adhesive and decorator's cork. Hey what's up guys yes it's your main man JB and I've got this piece of skirting that I need to fix back to the wall here. I'm in the ensuite and I took this bit of skirting off a few months ago because the edge of it here is right next to the shower and it had all swollen and split and everything it got moisture on it and it wasn't looking in a good way so I did take the skirting off and I prepared all the wall and I've also cleaned up this bit of skirting I've sealed it I've filled it and I've undercoated it and if you want to check out what I did on this piece of skirting you can check that out right here but maybe wait till the end of this video come back and have a look as I've said already I have put two coats of undercoat on this so I'm ready to put it uh, against the wall and the actual wall itself it's looking a bit better now than it was in the first place um, but it's uh, I have sealed it I've put a primer undercoat sealer on here uh, there's a little bit of plaster skim in there just to smooth it out but that is all sealed and ready for the skirting to be attached so i'm going to be using two of bartoline's products they are the 1876 professional range oh yes uh, they are the high strength grab adhesive and the flexible decorators cork now it's not always necessary to use grab adhesive to fix skirting sometimes depending on the area the wall you might actually find that it's been screwed to the wall or you want to screw it to the wall there might be a big bend in it or a big dip in the wall where you need to fix it right back um, so it really does depend on your wall but if you've got quite a flat wall like we've got here and quite a flat piece of skirting like I've got here you'll find when you offer it up that you could almost leave that in position right now um, and get away with not fixing it but uh, that wouldn't be ideal and uh, especially not for me I wouldn't be happy leaving it like that so obviously a little bit of adhesive on there to fix that back and then we're going to cork all the way along here and um, particularly in the corner now this grab adhesive you can use this indoors you can use it outdoors it is a high strength grab adhesive it is solvent free so it's not going to be really smelly it's a fast curing uh, adhesive which is good this particular one is white i'm not bothered about the color you're not going to see that and it also has excellent grab and green strength hmm what's green strength i hear you say well it just so happens that green strength or handling strength can be defined as the strength of a material as it is processed to form its final ultimate tensile strength there you go thanks to wikipedia as any adhesive you want to make sure that your skirting and your wall is free from any dirt grease loose particles flaking paint that kind of thing and that's why i would always advise making sure that the wall you are fixing it to is completely sound and it's not flaky or dusty if it is apply some pva or apply a suitable uh, primer sealer paint first thing we need to do is snip the end of the tube with a sharp knife mind those fingers then we can put the nozzle on the end so there is already a hole in the nozzle there but it's a little bit smaller than what I want now what you will notice on the end of these nozzles they do have a suggested angle kind of indented on the end which I'm going to go for because I'm quite happy uh, with that size so we'll just snip that off there as well now I guess if you were using a lot of this all at once you would want to just cut a much bigger hole on the end um, but I'm not really going to be using a huge amount on this so I want to put the cap on and uh, use it later for another job so let's get that 
and the cock and gun. There we go, ready to rock and roll. Let's get our piece of skirt in. Now you'll notice down here that there's actually some plaster missing. Um, it's quite rough down the bottom there. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about getting adhesive right on the bottom of this skirting or on the bottom of the wall there. There's just no point. Now you could uh, dot and dab it like it's been done here, but generally I like to put a consistent amount all the way along rather than just some blobs of it. So we don't want to go too close to the bottom, but at the same time we don't want to do it too close to the top edge because what we don't want to do is put this or push this against the wall and then it will start oozing out over the top. Uh, we don't need to do that because we are going to fill it with cork. So um, just keeping it away from top and bottom we just get that right in through the tube here. So I know that the skirting sits quite flush against the wall. There's no massive gaps. So I'm not going to worry about putting a large amount of sealant um, in one place more than another. I might just put a little bit extra in the middle. There. Make sure you release the trigger on your corking gun, otherwise it will continue to ooze out. You don't really want it oozing out. Now you should feel straight away whether there is enough on there. So we'll tuck that in there and then that should just go there. So it should feel a little bit spongy when you push it against it. Now that's hit quite hard against there and there. So what I'm going to do is just take that off again just to have a look and you can see where it has actually made contact. So what I might just do is put a couple more blobs in. It seems pretty good here in the middle. I might just put one big blob there. I'm just going to put that over the top. So better to have too much on there than not enough. Tuck that back in. Oh yeah, you can feel that now. It's not quite touching the wall. So you'll need to apply a bit of pressure just to squash it just so the Adhesive spreads out on the wall, on the skirting, and that will be that. Now in some cases you might need to put a wedge against the skirting because it might bow out a little bit. You might need to lift it up very slightly. Um, I think I might need to lift this end up just a little bit because it's not quite lining up with the other side or this part of the skirting. So I'm going to lift that up very slightly. There we go. You can see there the bottom of that skirting is in line with this one. I'm going to clean all that up with some cork. So uh, there we go. We'll leave that and we'll come back soon. Now this product can be used on lots of different surfaces or substrates including wood, glass, concrete, mortar, composite panels and unprimed metals. But I think the most important thing for me and when you're using grab adhesive is how strong the bond is initially because what you don't want to do is be fixing something and then you're having to hold it and wait for this to start going off. So the stronger the grab, the more effective, the better it's going to be. So what we're going to try is just putting some adhesive between these two wooden blocks and uh, just see if we can pull them apart and see how much they'll move on initial contact. Now these are very, have got very flat surfaces so 
that is going to be absolutely loads and they're not going to sit flush because there's quite a lot of adhesive there. Give them a squeeze, give them a little bit of a cold ivy. Already that is, that is really quite hard to, to twist. Now, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to pull those apart that way. Oh, just about, just about managed to pull that apart. But that is really strong. I mean, yes, okay, sheer force, it will drop down, so you'd need to support it, perhaps like I have here. But if it's only a light product that you're using the adhesive on, that's not going anywhere. Anyway, let's leave that on there for a while and see how hard that dries. Now, I've only left this for about 45 minutes and there, there is like no movement in there whatsoever. There's no way I can pull that apart. <laughs> but um, it still hasn't gone off completely because it's still wet in the joint here where it's squeezed out slightly. But uh, so far it seems to be performing really well. And um, I did this a good half hour, 45 minutes before that bit of wood. So I'm more than happy that this isn't going to move anywhere. Uh, I will keep that bit of paper under there that was just holding it up just for now. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, but it's safe to say at this point, we can now get it caught. <laughs> and I'm gonna be using Bartolin's 1876, the professional range, flexible decorators cork. The great thing about this stuff, it is paintable in one hour. You don't want a cork that you have to wait 24 hours to cure and dry before you can paint over it. Uh, it's crack resistant and it's for interior and exterior use. Now, although this is paintable in one hour, it really does depend on the thickness of the uh, amount of cork that you are applying. If you're only doing a very thin bead, it will dry a lot quicker than doing a much thicker bead. So this is also dependent on the temperature. Uh, so if it's warm and humid, it's gonna dry much quicker than if it is cold, for example. Uh, the other thing I would suggest as well is that you do use a good quality paint on top of any cork. Um, people do complain that a lot of corks crack and it's not necessarily the cork, a lot of the time it's the paint. And if you're using a not so good quality paint on top of the cork, then you're gonna get the cracks. Now, I'm not going to put any undercoat on the cork. This has already been undercoated, so once I've corked it, I'm then going to paint it with a good quality satin wood finish paint on top of the skirting and over the cork. Anyway, let's get on with it. Put the nozzle on, and once again, we'll just snip the top off. Now these larger nozzles, they don't have holes already in the end, so um, if you want the smallest hole, you need to just take the very end off, just like that. And you can just about see that. Yeah, it's not very big at all. I'm not filling very large gaps, so I'm gonna keep the hole relatively small, but I'm gonna cut it at an angle. So I'm going to tackle this corner first and get this all cleaned up. Um, make it look a lot better than what it is now. First thing I'll do, I'll just wipe everything with a damp cloth just to make sure there's absolutely no dust or anything around it. There we go, perfect. So we'll get the cork, go in, in here. Initially it might look a little bit messy, but we'll soon smooth all of that out. A little bit up there. That'll probably be enough. And then just making sure your fingers are a little bit damp before you smooth it off. Got a big gap there, big gap there. 
got a big gap there so we just shove a bit of excess cork into there. So the first thing to do is just really try and push the cork into all the gaps. It might look a little bit messy to start with. But then once you've got it all in and you give it all a bit of a wipe, then that actually looks pretty good. So now we'll run along this top edge. I'll just give that a quick wipe again. And then really not a big gap, so I'm gonna put a relatively thin bead all the way along there. Don't worry when you do this initially for the first time, you start and stop and you end up with more cork in one area than another because you can always clean it up and use it somewhere else. But the idea is to push that cork down into that gap. So there we go, look at that, fixed to the wall, we've got our cork in the gap there and that looks absolutely fantastic. Once the wall and the skirting are painted, that will just look spot on. Well the cork completely dried, I've put one coat of two coats on top, just so you can see how nice that looks along that top edge, how well that cork has gone in. Uh, I'm going to give it a second coat and this is really just to protect it from when we're using the shower but I'm really happy with it, it looks really good. And as far as this bit of timber goes with the adhesive on it, well that, that is absolutely stuck rock solid. That has probably been about two and a half hours and there's no way that's coming apart so uh, I'm really impressed with that as well. So there you go guys, it's the Bartoline 1876, the professional range, high strength grab adhesive and flexible decorator's cork. Fantastic. I do hope you found this video interesting and helpful and uh, don't forget to subscribe and all that jazz and I'll see you lot on the next video.